Okay, guys, welcome to the recap of uh, the pro trading strategy that we have on uh, YouTube and on our uh, social network, urbanforex.ning.com. Um, today, we're just going to go over uh, recaps and reviews of trades that occurred since February 1st up till date um, using the strategy. Um, if you guys haven't already watched the strategy, you guys can always uh, go to youtube.com forward slash urbanforex and it's on the featured video. Okay, so uh, let's get this started here. Let's move our charts to February 1st and let's take it from there. Okay, the markets are continuing to drop. Um, those of you who are in my chat room on Forex Watchers, do remember to start looking to exit your positions soon. Okay, yes, do look to exit your positions soon. Yeah, in fact, exit your positions now. Okay, so February 1st. Now let's move pound to February 1st. Let's move your sort of CAD to February 1st. Swiss franc. Now, before I begin, I'm going to go through quick recap for five minutes on uh, uh, the trading strategy, what is used, how it's used, and uh, what websites you can use to uh, understand some of this stuff. Okay, New Zealand dollar. February 1st, there we go. And finally, Euro Yen. Nice drop. Okay, let's move this to February 1st. Okay. Now, in this pro trading strategy, what we actually look for is pivot points uh, and exhaustion candles that work together. Exhaustion candles are basically a candle that forms a very, very large tail that sticks out. You can see, for example, this particular tail you can see there's nothing on the left. It sticks out. You can see it if you're um, if you're not sitting in front of your computer, but you're far away. You can still see it spotted out. It forms in a trend. The tail comes out and it bounces off of a pivot line. In terms of pivots, whenever you are looking at pivot points, for example, if this this whole area here is today, you want to look for three days worth of pivots. Using pivots just on the single day is useless. Okay. And I can say that, again, it's useless, okay? So this is one day, this is the second day, and this is the third day, okay? So always keep, uh, keep a lookout on your pivot lines for uh, three days of data total, okay? Now, once uh, an exhaustion candle forms, basically you want to, the exhaustion candle tells you that the market is going to reverse. Uh, that is a sign of a reversal. Um, for example, this is an exhaustion candle here. It sticks out and so on and so forth. And there's several, there's all across. Uh, this doesn't stick out as much, but uh, similar concept. Large tail, small body. So whenever you have an exhaustion, it's telling you the market wants to reverse. Uh, you can open your trade at the opening of the next candle. Rule number one, never open a trade on a moving candle. That means wait for the candle to close and then make your decision. Do not make your decision based on something that's moving. Okay. Now, uh, here is the one. Here is one website I want you guys to write down, uh, or you guys can just uh, Google it. It's by Oanda. They call it currency correlation. Uh, it's fxtrade.oanda.com forward slash analysis forward slash currency dash correlation. Um, this currency correlation basically tells you what pairs move together and what pairs move opposite. Okay. Now, now let's, for example, let me take a look at uh, EURUSD on February 1st. You can see EURUSD on February 1st went down and then it went up all the way. 
if we actually take a look at Euro USD, we select Euro USD from the drop down. Anything that you see in dark red is pairs that move together with Euro USD. Again, red means together. Anything that you see in dark blue means the pairs going opposite of Euro USD. Okay? Now, the longer history of redness, the better it is. The first row is one week. The second row is one month, and then three months, six months, one year, and two years. So you can see there's, there's been a lot of correlation with US dollar Swiss franc since the last two years. It's always been going opposite. Same with pound. It's always been going together. It's been red throughout the last two years. So pairs like this you need to watch. Uh, we have gold uh, and silver also that go with Euro USD. Okay. So now when you're looking at, uh, when you select Euro USD, it's saying that Aussie dollar will do the same, pound dollar will do the same. So let's take a look at Aussie dollar and pound dollar. Okay, Euro USD goes up, pound dollar, market comes down and it goes up, exactly like Euro USD. Aussie dollar, market comes down, goes completely up, exactly like Euro USD. So you do your analysis on one, but you can take your trades on all three of them. That's the beauty of correlation, okay? So just, re just remember that, and you can use this website, uh, fxtrade.oanda.com. It's by Oanda, just Google it. The first link should be this one. Um, okay, so as of right now, before we continue, any questions so far, okay, on what is an exhaustion candle, um, what are pivot points, and, uh, just checking two pairs for exhaustion is enough. Uh, Ram is asking if they're uh, checking for two pairs for exhaustion is enough. It's like this. Whenever you see an exhaustion, now let's take a look at Euro USD. Okay? You see on Euro USD here, let me draw some pointers here. Okay, this is not so clear. That there is no, there's practically, this is not practically an exhaustion at all, because the body is way too big, the tail is way too, excuse me, the tail is way too small. It's supposed to be the other way around. the The body is supposed to be small, and the tail is supposed to be big. Let's take a look at the next pair, pound dollar. Okay, what do we have here now? Here, it's a little bit more clear. Same time frame, at the same time. When Euro USD was created, this created. Difference is this one went all the way down, touched the pivot, came back up, and it closed near the open, creating this exhaustion. Euro USD already turned around and started going up. So this is the leader right now. You can see the candle's already green. It's already on its way up. Okay? So we have a definite confirmation on pound, a maybe on euro. Let's continue. At this, what time was this? This was at nine o'clock on the, my chart time. Okay, so US dollar CAD, what do we have at nine o'clock? Okay, we have a short on this one. The market has already left, no exhaustion whatsoever. Just a small tail and a small body, but the market's already left, it's going down. Now, the one pair that we know so far, I'm not even looking at all the pairs, just looking at one pair right now. Pound, dollar, GBP, USD. What is it saying? Okay, let's, let's jot this down. So whenever you guys um, have a uh, trade, this is what you want to do. GBP USD has the exhaustion. Okay, the pairs that GBP USD works with is Australian dollar, US dollar. It works exactly with it. It works Euro USD exactly with it. Now opposite, for opposite, I'll put an X. US dollar CAD. US dollar Swiss franc and in the last week US dollar Japanese yen uh, but let's skip Japanese yen because we've had white in the past also okay but we do have gold that goes with it if you if you like gold trading gold is an option too okay so these are the pairs that go with it all I know there's there's one exhaustion and from these pairs that we listed, 
Euro USD has already left. US dollar Swiss franc, uh, US dollar CAD already left. Let's take a look at US dollar Swiss franc. It's it's dropped strongly at nine uh, nine o'clock. Let's take a look. Yes, this is nine o'clock, and look at the size of this drop. And it's also bounced off of the pivot point right here. Okay, so already left on that one too. What other pair goes with this? Last but not least, we have gold. Let's open up gold here. Let's move gold to our uh, February 1st. And let's see what it's done at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock, it's already left. Okay, it's gone long. So at the end of 9 o'clock, we see all of these pairs that's already left, but on pound, all we see is the candle is still red. It just created an exhaustion. It is just now getting ready to go long. Okay? This gives you a heads up that pound dollar is lagging behind. It just needed that extra price, which all the other pairs actually got their price and left. But pound dollar just needed that extra push. Once it got it, it went back and it got ready for its long. This is why an exhaustion gets created. Okay? So once this happened, on all these pairs, you, you can enter along up until the next pivot line for the last three days. And this last three days, this day, this day, and this day. From the price, the, uh, the opening of the next candle, which is right here, which is right there, you enter along. The first line that comes in between on its way up is yesterday's pivot line then comes today's pivot line and then comes day before its pivot line this is your halt area this is where the market is going to start acting up okay so from the opening until this first zone you are good to go that is a clear uh, profit zone for you okay now on the other hand when you're taking these trades Right when these things start touching, you want to take a look at this also. This zone will also start touching. Move this one. When you enter long on your USD at the opening of the next candle, which is right there, you want to keep an eye out for the first uh, first pivot line, which is right there. As the pivot lines start touching, start looking to exit all of your trades. Because you've entered all the trades together, exit all of them together too. Even though if one pair says minus 6 pips and all the other ones say 10 pips profit, 5 pips profit, you know, put together, put it all together, you should be overall, you should be overall in profit. And you, it's best to exit those trades. Okay, uh, does it make sense so far? Okay, uh, how about a totally opposite candle on a correlated pair? Okay, so that is actually an example from today. Uh, what if there is an opposite candle on, on today? Okay, so let's take a look at today. But just wanted to make sure, uh, before Ram, before I go into that, I'm going to make sure everybody else got this. Uh, I mean, if your USD and Aussie dollar forms opposite candles contradicting each other, if that happens, you want to avoid it. Um, and when I when I say avoid it, I will show you an example of what exactly that means as well. Um, Mark says clearly the point is to ID the correct exhaustion candle wherein the market turns. I see that sometimes we have a long tail but a short turnaround. How do you ID the correct exhaustion candle? The correlated correlation explained helps. Thanks. Yes. Um, it. It does uh, make a big difference if you're using correlation because if you just look at one pair and you see an exhaustion, it, people tend to get excited and you need to be very patient. This is the reason why we're trading on the one hour charts. It gives you enough time, open up your correlation chart, uh, match everything through. There's only seven pairs. Look through the seven pairs and see what is matching up and what isn't. Once that is done, um, the ideal exhaustion is the one where the one the tail sticks out and it is formed in a trend and also it is bouncing off of an exhaustion that is the uh, ideal uh, exhaustion candle okay 
John, yes, you did understand this. Um, Perry, can you go over the exhaustion versus trend continuation candles? Okay, I will go go over that too. I'm just gonna answer Ram's question real quick, and then Perry will go over your question. Okay, Ram, you asked me if uh, um, w what happens when you have a totally opposite situation. Now, uh, I believe it was New Zealand dollar that we were looking at today. Take a look at this. Uh, 8 o'clock today, New Zealand dollar, exhaustion created. We're supposed to go long. Okay? Now, I get my paper out, and I put New Zealand dollar, US dollar, exhaustion. Okay? I don't know if anything else has an exhaustion or not. I, I can care less. All I know right now, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, exhaustion. So, what do I do? I may take a look at the other pairs. Is there any other exhaustions anywhere else for today? And when I say exhaustion, I'm talking about clear exhaustion, something that you can see from a mile away and be like, yes, we're good. Uh, let me clean this mess here. Eight o'clock. Nothing at eight o'clock here. Okay, so just New Zealand US dollar, we see an exhaustion, right? So what we do is we first go into currency correlation, put out New Zealand dollar. Okay, we write down all the red, dark reds, and all the dark blues. Dark red means goes together. So what goes together? Aussie dollar goes together. Um, and we only have Aussie dollar and we have US dollar CAD that goes against. US dollar CAD goes opposite. So this exhaustion says long. So this should be long and this should be short. Now let's take a look. Aussie dollar at nine o'clock, uh, eight o'clock, sorry, which is this one here. Okay, it's giving us a similar exhaustion look-alike it's not clear but it has a look-alike it's bouncing off of a pivot also and it's saying long okay so we can put here okay okay so this is also an okay us dollar cad is saying short let's take a look at us dollar cad all right here we go eight o'clock now this pattern here is what we call a trend continuation pattern this if you actually take your uh, arrow and you put it onto the body, you can see which direction this wants to go. Okay, the tail is on the bottom instead of on top. So this is contradicting now exactly what you asked. So this is a no-go. Okay, so that means if this particular trade does work out, there is not much strength in this trade. Okay, and this is the reason why you can see New Zealand dollar it went up but only slightly same thing with Aussie dollar went up but only slightly and then it, the market went uh, in the original trends direction okay so that I hope that makes sense so if you have a contradiction try to avoid it if not get out at your first pivot line and avoid the one that has a contradiction but entering trades with contradictions and the correlations that do not say there's a contradiction uh, avoid it avoid it Okay, Roy is asking, I remember when uh, training with you a while back, you mentioned that since you did an hour of analysis that you shouldn't stay in a trade too long, short analysis, short trade. Yes, now, and this is, this is how it works. Now, if, when you do an analysis, if you're looking at three candles to do an analysis, for example, uh, uh, right here, this exhaustion formed, how do you know this is an exhaustion? Okay. For you to see clearly that this is an exhaustion, you have to look at the past two candles. That's the only way you'll find out that this is an exhaustion. Okay? You have to look slightly to the past to find out if the current candle is an exhaustion or not. So you're involving the last two candles to see, does the exhaustion come out in a trend? So that means you're looking at a total of three candles, which means three hours worth of data. So when you're looking at three hours worth of data, you're projected analysis is only for three hours worth maximum four hours 
Anything past that is a gamble. Okay? So uh, that is the reason why you should not hold on to a trade uh, for too much long, for too long. Okay. Anton, hey Anton, uh, good morning. Glad you've made it. Floyd, guessing you wouldn't have taken a candle as entry where the tail is equal on both sides. I mean, yes, uh, Floyd, no. If the tail is equal on both sides, that's uh, similar to a doji if the body is equal. Otherwise, this is exactly what you're talking about. Let me show you. Yeah, uh, where'd it go? Here it is. This pattern right here. This is what we call indecision in the market. So you want to avoid that. That is, that's not something we can work with. Okay, Ram, how do you put the arrow to show where it wants to go? Okay, all you do is you just take the arrow and you put it onto the body. So it just looks like a rocket. You can see which direction it wants to go. Yeah, it's just a little trick, but uh, you actually don't need it. Whichever, wherever the direction the body is, just consider that as uh, where it's heavy and it's pulling the market down. If this is on top, then yeah, it's, it's pulling the market up. Okay. Uh, good morning, Eddie. Uh, Mohammed, today, 5-hour terminal time, all the correlated pairs have an exhaustion candle but did not work. Um, I believe that was the New Zealand dollar that we just looked at, uh, Mohammed. Uh, let me know if that's not the one. Roy, do you have some defining characteristics of what an exhaustion candle should be? Let's, let's, let's write them down. There are several things for an exhaustion candle. Okay. And yes, uh, Roy, if you can get this programmed for everybody, that would be amazing. Um, the tail should stick out. Uh, nothing touches it. Okay, second thing for an exhaustion candle is should form during a trend. Third, um, bounce off pivot is necessary. And last but not least, if the exhaustion is bigger than the previous candle, it's ideal. Okay, for example, that uh, pound dollar that we looked at uh, on uh, on on the first, or even this exhaustion right here, as an example, you can see that this exhaustion formed in a downtrend and an immediate downtrend. If you just even look at the last three or four candles, you can see the market was in a downtrend. This exhaustion was why is it moving? Oh, there we go. This exhaustion formed, nice long tail body over here it's bigger than the previous candle this is a strong exhaustion but it's not bouncing off of a pivot but if you want just an exhaustion this is what it needs to look like this is a textbook example okay all right uh, Jay is it, advi is it advisable to use any other confirmation uh, you can you guys can use uh, divergence uh, I have tons and tons of tons of information on uh, the social network about divergence I love divergions just as much as I do uh, pivot points. Indicators I hate, but because of the divergence indicators give, that's it's beautiful. Okay, Mohammed, uh, that's not the one. Okay, Mohammed, so let's take a look at that one uh, at uh, five o'clock. You said. Let's see here. Let me open up Euro USD. Um, five o'clock I'm not sure what server you're on are you talking about any one of these candles okay Roy is perfect Floyd is the signal strong is, is the signal stronger if there are multiple exhaustion candles side by side yes 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 take a look at US dollar CAD today now, there's, it's not exhaustion candles, but you see these tails starting to form around uh, um, your pivot lines. This is something uh, a member of ours uh, caught today, uh, Dwight Thompson, 
And once these formations starts forming around these pivot lines, you can see that there's pressure to go short. You know, even though the market is going in an upward movement, this whole area, there's two pivot lines, plus these tails creating, it's telling you that there is pressure to push the market back down, and which it did. Now, how far it pushes it back down depends on a bird's eye view when you look at everything. But you immediately you know that time for a halt. Okay, so I hope that helps Floyd. Uh, Ram, uh, have to leave in a few minutes to catch the train. Okay, uh, take care. Can the exhaustion be in between the pivots? Uh, yes, it can. As long as the correlating pairs are around the pivot lines, that's fine. Uh, Lufthala, how do you know that the US dollar is gaining or losing strength every day? Okay. Now, when you look at all the pairs, okay, now, I usually do the forecasting uh, by, you know, drawing trend lines and uh, doing some fib numbers. Once the forecasts are done, for example, if this is my forecasted area, okay, where I'm saying the market's going to come up and touch and then go short, usually all my pairs will say something similar. Something like this means market goes up into this and then it will come, come down from this area. Okay. This means overall the market wants to go down, which means the US dollar will gain strength because in a pair like Euro USD, okay, whatever you see on the left, that's called a base pair, okay, okay and what you see on the right is called the counter, okay, so. If the euro USD goes down, that means the US dollar strength. So, Luftala, if uh, every day, uh, if my forecast says short, 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 that actually means US dollar is going to be strong. And if all my pairs start saying go, it's that the market is going to go long, then I'm saying the US dollar is going to be weak. So, that's how that's put together. Uh, Mohammed, you're saying yes, that is the one. Okay, so let's take a look at that one now. That, well, I believe that was Euro USD we were looking at. Okay, so it's this one right here. Okay, so let's take a look here. What do we have? Okay, a couple things. We're bouncing off of a pivot. Okay, bouncing off of two pivots, strong support. Okay, let's pull up our chart here. Euro USD, exhaustion. What else? What time was this? This was at, uh, uh, let me put my mic proper. This was at five, five o'clock on my chart. Let's take a look at pound for today. Five o'clock right here also an exhaustion okay bouncing off of a pivot from uh, day before yesterday okay exhaustion let's take a look at other pairs US dollar CAD at five o'clock okay not an exhaustion but the train has already left, which is good. Now, what do we have here? We have, it's bouncing off of one pivot. It's above the second one, and it's above the third one. Strong, strong, strong support right here. Okay? So, now, now that we know, okay, before we get into any other pairs, we have two pairs that have exhaustions, US dollar, uh, uh, Euro USD and pound dollar. US dollar CAD has already left its leading, but it has strong support. Now, this is only gonna make a difference if these two pairs correlate with this. So let's take a look at uh, Euro USD. Do we have correlation with US dollar CAD? Yes, it's dark blue. Pound dollar, US dollar CAD, dark blue. 
So both of these are correlated with US dollar CAD. All in all, it means no trade. Does that make sense? Because it's already at its pivot line and it's not just one pivot line that's, that's uh, stopping, it's two. So that's a lot of strength right there. Okay, and the other pair was Aussie dollar, you know, that goes down with it. So we can take a look at Aussie dollar at also at uh, uh, five o'clock, which is right here, bounced off of two pivot lines. And this was also a good for a long, and this also had left the building. Okay, and if we look at Aussie dollar, because Aussie dollar was also an exhaustion, so we look at Aussie dollar, same thing, US dollar CAD. It's correlating with that. So everything correlates with this, all the exhaustions that formed at 5 o'clock. Okay, so I hope that makes sense why there was no trade on that one, and why you have to avoid it. Okay, Scott, uh, should we be using FX Pro as our server? I use FXCM and they seem to suck. <laughs> you, you, you. Scott, I am recording this webinar. You're going to get me in trouble, man. <laughs> um, you, you can use FX Pro uh, as your server. Um, I use them all the time because their server is fast and their demos do not lag. I never have any problems with their demos. Um, and it's, it's unlimited. They never stop me at, after 30 days. They just keep letting me roll. So... Um, and I've just been using it for the longest time, so I'm just used to it. Uh, Lufthala, we know that oil is traded on a monthly contract and the uh, current contract will end in five days. Is there a way to make profits on that day, knowing that the positions will be closed before midnight? Um, actually, Lufthala, I have to probably look into that. It does sound interesting to research and look into. Um, maybe in the next recap, I'll have some information to, uh, for you about that. Sounds fun. Uh, Ram, is the dollar index or euro index helpful at all? Uh, maybe. I do not look at them at all myself, so it, it might be. I'm not sure. Uh, Luftala, sorry I came in late. Can you re-explain the exhaustion candle concept? Uh, Luftala, don't worry. Uh, this webinar is recorded, so um, I'll let you can replay it. I'll have it up probably uh, in a couple days. Don't worry. Can you send me an article to read the concept uh, by, e by email maybe? Okay, okay, no problem. I have your email. I'll send it to you via email. Uh, are there market reversals uh, in the 20, 10 to 20 pip range which you observe occurring with some time regularity? For example, London close. Market reversal in the 10 to 20 uh, Mark, I don't think I understood your question. Can you rephrase it and ask me again? Ram, we have a holiday on Monday. Any chance we can have a webinar? Um, okay, okay. Why don't... Uh, uh, I, I might hold a different webinar for a different strategy on Monday, uh, not just the same one because we're just doing recaps today for this one. And if we do a recap on Monday, there's not much data to recap on. We need at least a week's gap for this particular strategy. Uh, Eddie, do you know which pair correlates with the uh, Euro New Zealand dollar? Um, you might have to look at both Euro USD and uh, New Zealand dollar US dollar. And I believe Euro NZD is a crazy pair, if I'm not mistaken. With 15 pips of spread. Wow. Um, let me take a look here. Euro NZD. Yeah, this is a beast. It moves quite a bit as well, just like uh, our majors 180 pips at a time um, no yeah I, I do not uh, know which pairs would correlate with this other than uh, euro USD but looking at the gaps in between each candle uh, looks like this pair might be a little bit dangerous on some brokers but you can you get you're getting quite a bit of exhaustions on here you can use the exhaustion concept with uh, pivot lines on this just need to be a little bit cautious. Uh, Ram, excellent. Luftala, Monday seems good to me too. Okay, same time. Uh, I, I will announce it on the network, um, what time it will be. Uh, it, it can, yes, it is. Ram, looking forward to learn a new method on Monday. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, Ram, it's going to be one of the methods that's on the website. So, 
Okay, Jay, Naveen, what are the ideal pairs to trade on this strategy? Okay, here's the seven pairs that I trade. Okay, you can write this down. Euro USD. Pound USD. Euro Yen. Aussie USD. New Zealand USD. Okay. And then there are pairs that are opposite, which is US dollar Swiss franc and US dollar CAD. Okay, these are usually in the same direction and these are opposite. That's a total of seven pairs. These are my favorite pairs and they work quite well with each other. And they include the majors as well. So. Okay, take care, Ram. Have a great day. Okay, so let's continue. Um, I hope you guys have got this down. In fact, I'll write this down for you, uh, Jay. Okay. All right. Now, let's go back to our recaps. Let me close uh, this Euro NZD. Uh, uh, Naveen, is it uh, also good to look at risk charts to determine if the market sentiment is uh, uh, appetite or risk aversion? Mm. You can, Perry. Um, it's going to be like this. You can get as detailed as you want with Forex trading, but the only problem is the more you look into it, the more it's going to consume your time and actually the tougher it's going to become to turn a profit. You need to look at it as if almost in a factor that it, it shouldn't matter to you as much because you entered the trade, you put in your stops, uh, you know what it's going to do and then you walk away. So using this method, Yes, there are going to be some losses, but yeah, you if you're looking to even refine those losses, uh, it's going to be tough because the moment you have a single or one or two losses, it's going to affect you psychologically because you're going to look to refine that also. And then when refining that, you might end up ruining something else. So it's, it's best to keep it simple as possible. Uh, Floyd, uh, do you have uh, favorites? These seven pairs are my favorites. Uh, and... If you're talking about a strategy, this strategy is one of my favorites. Lufta, do you have an uh, answer for the increase in the equities despite a decrease in US dollar or Euro? Uh, no, I do not have an answer for that. I'm not much in equities, um, all currency. Uh, do you have a favorite pair and why volume liquid? Yes, um, my favorite pair is actually Euro USD and pound dollar uh, along with Euro yen. These three are my favorite pairs because of yes, liquidity and uh, the amount of trading that's done. Also, the spreads are low. Uh, they're very competitive spreads. And because there's a lot of liquidity, a lot of uh, low spreads, and a lot of volume, a lot of people on it, uh, brokers messing with their trades on these particular pairs is going to be quite less. And I am not that big enough myself to actually go directly onto the market and trade. You know, I, I still have to go through a broker myself. Um, okay, uh, can, can you hear me now, Mark? Is, is that better? Uh, Lutfala, is, uh, is there a possibility to send the forecast an hour before the usual time? Uh, yes, I can. Um, it just, I usually send out the forecast in a single time in a day because no matter where I'm traveling in the world, that time is the most ideal time. Otherwise, if I send the forecast earlier from let's say from China and then I go to the US and then I can't make it at that time it's gonna be difficult for me and then the question starts arising why is the forecast late and whatnot so I choose a central time where I can make it from all around the world uh, Eddie Kane uh, do you have any strategies using the HE MUCO system uh, no I do not actually um, I do have some friends here in China that use it I will ask them if they can uh, share some of their strategies with us and you know see what they do so uh, I'll see if I can have them come onto the social network and uh, 
uh, start plotting their strategies. Maybe you guys can use them. Mark, okay, I think you can hear me fine now. Um, for the yen pairs. Uh, Jay, uh, you're asking about forecast. Um, uh, Luftala is actually a member of my uh, uh, different website called forexwatchers.com where I do a lot of forecasting for the day. You know, I, I predict where the market's going to go in the next 10 hours. Um, Eddie Kane, okay, Floyd. Is there the same pivot point indicator for MT5? Um, I do not know. Actually, uh, maybe Roy can help with that question. I'm not sure how different MT5 indicators are or if it can even just use MT4 indicators into it. So um, I, I'm sorry, Floyd, I, I can't answer that. I'm not, I'm not technically uh, adverse with stuff like that. Okay, Luftala says, I still did not take any positions today. I wasn't available before. Uh, is there anything clear for you now? No, uh, nothing now. I was short on all the pairs. Uh, I just mentioned before the webinar started to exit the pairs. So um, Euro USD gave a good profit. Pound dollar gave a decent gain. Uh, Euro yen gave a really good gain. So um, Luftala, just stand by till tomorrow. Um, I'll open up the room again tomorrow and we can continue from there. Okay, so let's continue with uh, some more examples and recaps. Okay, let's see here. Let's go back to February 1st. We did one of the examples. Okay, February 1st, okay. Now, let's take a look at this particular exhaustion here. Okay. This was on uh, February 3rd. We have an exhaustion that goes long. Okay. Let's look at February 3rd. This one says going long. Okay. Uh, what time was this? Uh, this was at 1600 hours on my chart. Let's take a look at 1600 hours. 1600 hours okay large tail but the train has not left okay here we go let's take a look at this exhaustion long and left okay bureau usd um exhaustion lagging okay lagging means it's still behind it's still red it hasn't got a chance to go up yet Bounced off the pivot, nothing on its way. Clear skies. Uh, actually, there's one resistance right there. Okay. So the closest resistance is right there. Now let's take a look at US dollar CAD 1600. On 3rd Feb. Sixteen hundred. Yes. Okay. So on US dollar CAD, the markets are dropping short. Okay. Markets are heavily, heavily short right now, and no formation whatsoever. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at your sources, Frank. See where we stand there. So far, is everyone understanding what I'm doing and why? 1600 is right here. Exhaustion lookalike. Okay, and it's lagging. 
when I say exhaustion look like means it has a large tail but it's not a complete exhaustion okay now when you have situations like this where uh, the market is just one inch or one centimeter away from uh, your price but nothing else after that you can slide by that because this from broker to broker this will be either above or below it, it ranges so you can slip one or two pips in this area in terms of the and the price like this is 92056 you can think of it as 9207 or 9203 okay um, Aussie dollar here before we even continue let's just pull this up we have enough exhaustion we have enough data now pound dollar Okay, they're saying Aussie dollar, US dollar, Swiss franc, US dollar, CAD. So Aussie dollar needs to get on the chart. Okay, this is important too. Let's take a look at Aussie dollar. 3rd Feb. 1600. Okay. Indecision. Okay, there's a tail on top and tail on bottom that looks practically alike, and it's bouncing off of a pivot. It's in between two pivot lines. Indecision. Okay, so what can you tell so far from just by looking at this? Uh, let me see who's in the room here. Just uh, let's say. Uh, John, have you, John Barry, have you gone through uh, my videos before? Okay, yes. John, just by looking at the information I've typed, I'm not going to even let you see my screen. Just by looking at what I've typed on this, on this piece of paper, what do you think is, from all these pairs, what is the best pair to take? Okay, and uh, the rest of you guys also, um, please do join in on the conversation. Uh, what do you guys think is the best pair to trade, uh, to take, and why? And uh, I will pick. Okay, GBP, USD, Luftla says pound dollar, uh, John says pound dollar, Dwight says euro, USD, uh, Mark says pound dollar. Okay, the first and the third. Uh, Sonia says pound dollar and US dollar CAD. Okay. Scott says Euro USD and Swissy. Okay. 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 From all of this, Floyd says Euro USD. Perry says pound. Uh, Luftala says because it is exhausted, so the trend is clear. Luftala was saying pound. Okay. Now, here, here is where the analysis comes in. You guys have looked at the charts based on what I saw, based on what you saw. Okay, here is that extra mile difference when you write stuff like this down and then you just take a look at this. Forget your charts, throw it away. Look at this piece of paper, what you wrote down. This is really what makes the difference. Who's, whoever said Euro USD and uh, also who's ever said US dollar Swiss franc uh, wins. This, this, this situation. The reason why, let's explain to you. Pound dollar, okay, it has an exhaustion. It's already green, right? Now, the correlating pair for pound dollar is also Euro USD. Now, it's an exhaustion also, but it's still red. It hasn't left yet, okay? So, this means you are guaranteed no matter what happens, this is going to touch your next pivot line. Okay, so you go long on this one for short. US dollar Swiss franc. Okay, you have a short for US dollar Swiss franc. And also it's lagging. You can see it's still green. It hasn't gone down any 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 bit yet. So when you take a short at the opening of the next candle, let's 
clear all this. You take a short right here at the opening of the next candle. Also, nothing stopping this one on the way. Let me move this until here. Boom. Guaranteed profit there. And Euro USD. Guaranteed profit there. Euro USD hit within uh, one hour. US dollar Swiss franc took exactly three hours. Okay, maybe less. So, now, the reason why is because these lagging pairs, because they're correlating, they have to catch up. Very, very rare in the market you will see that pound has left and euro is correlating with pound and euro hasn't left yet. You know, that's just telling you that there's money on the table, take it. Okay? So this lag, what people used to do in the past, they used to use one broker versus another broker, and they used to take advantage of this lag. You don't have to. You can actually see the lag in front of your eyes on the same screen. Just the difference is that you need to look at the correlating pairs, and you have that data already done for you on this chart. Does it make sense to everybody why, um, how this stuff works? Let me move this up out here. Okay, so was it clear that uh, we need to focus on our lagging pairs because that is pretty much guaranteed profit. now. Because all the other pairs are still in the same direction, you're good. You can still take all of the pairs and not just um, take these few pairs. You can take all the pairs and make a profit out of it. Yeah, Luftala, don't worry, the webinar is recorded, so you can always go over it as many times as you want. I will uh, post it up soon. Okay, John, yes, okay. Okay, so that's clear. Now, the, we have time for one more example. And this time, I am going to select several of you from the room to do some of this. Okay, I'm going to pick out an exhaustion. And I want you guys to open up your screens and see which pairs correlate. Let me see here. And what should we done? I, I want this little note made. Okay. All right, uh, let me find an exhaustion that's a little bit tricky. Nine o'clock. Okay. All right. Pound dollar. This exhaustion right here that's bounced off of the pivot, closed above all of our pivot lines. That one on February 7th. Okay. These are the support. This thing closed right above the support of all of them. Nice little exhaustion look alike. Okay, so, all right, analysis, everyone, analysis. Let's get your papers out. Let's see what, what can be done on this particular one. What would you do and why? And not just why, just write down this information. Why will automatically be answered. Um, Scott, when you, when where do you pull them off at? Um, are you talking about the exits? When do we exit the trades? Is that what you're asking? Jay, so in short, best trade to look uh, to trade the lagging correlating pairs. Is that correct? Yes, Jay. The lagging correlating pairs is pretty much the one that's going to actually give you uh, easy, smooth profit. But uh, you can take all the other pairs also. But the lagging correlating pairs are the best pairs 
in terms of if you have a list like that and if somebody asks you what is the best pair to take right now and you know you want to be a hot shot be like I can tell you take this pair I got this okay okay Scott in terms of exit you want to exit at your next available pivot line okay if you have two or three pairs that have already reached a pivot line exit everything even though some of your pairs have not uh, touched the pivot lines so that's very important so whatever pairs are correlating for example if I'm using pound what do we know from pound which pairs correlate euro USD US dollar CAD US dollar Swiss franc and Aussie dollar these are the pairs that we know that correlate with uh, pound when I want to exit pound whatever pivot line touches any one of these I exit all I exit all and it should be a decent game okay if anything is lagging you you are welcome to hold it out till the next pivot line you should be fine okay I'll see if I can get some more examples on the network uh, regarding the lags okay so um let's take a look here now pound dollar okay we have a look-alike let's see are there any okay nobody has done this so far maybe there you guys are still working on it but I'm gonna sake of time I'm gonna uh, do this one real quick here 7th February on my chart it's at 1500 hours euro USD 7 February 1500 hours market has left way way past three hours it's left that's that's the one right there no formation okay Uh, February 7th on my chart Sonia it says 1500 uh, let me show you the candle how it looks on pound dollar it's that particular candle this one right here the one my arrow is on uh, Roy gotta run uh, you're the man okay take care Roy I will see you on the forum uh, thanks for your help uh, on the forums and the community we'll see you around soon take care man Okay, so now Euro USD, that's pairs already left. Now the other correlating pair is US dollar Swiss franc and US dollar CAD, 7 February, 1700 hours. Okay, heavily, heavily short. Okay, and it is gone past, it stopped right at our pivot line. Oh, take care, Jay. I'll see you around. Okay, now before I even continue, just looking at US dollar CAD, markets have dropped. It's at a support level. Should I even continue looking at the rest? Is there a potential trade whatsoever? So far, no exhaustions. Um, Euro USD has already left three hours uh, earlier. US dollar CAD has stopped at a pivot line. No formations on US dollar CAD also. No. Okay, great. Uh, take care, Mark. Uh, have a great day ahead. Uh, Perry, you're right. Uh, no trade. So you leave this batch alone. Uh, you're welcome, Mark. Yes, I will have the, this webinar uploaded uh, in a day or two. So you guys can catch it on that. Dwight, uh, good, yes, no. Okay, so you need to be very, very careful when you're looking at all this. There's an exhaustion, you check the correlating pairs. Once you check the correlating pairs, you know what to look for. You write down what you, you write down exactly what you see. And then you just take a look at your paper and you forget your charts and from the paper you understand, what do I need to do? 
and it, things will start to unfold. You do one exhaustion, two exhaustions, three exhaustions. By the time you reach your fifth exhaustion and you watch how the market unfolds, you're going to be ready for this. Okay. Yes, John, avoid the more than likely. Um, Dwight, I would just wait till the next trade comes along. Good. Uh, brilliant. I, I cannot see any chat text. Uh, brilliant. These chat texts only come to me if, well, whenever somebody writes. That's only if I respond, it comes to everybody. Okay. Okay, the ACM platform does not look like an exhaustion. Okay, more like indecision. Okay, so Sonia, I think you can probably open up, uh, uh, if you want, another... Uh, in fact, even my, my chart doesn't have an exhaustion. But uh, are, are you on MT4, Sonia, on ACM, or are you using the proprietary platform? Okay, so all in all... Just, just uh, re recall that uh, for the next week before we hit the next webinar of this review again, uh, since time is up right now, you guys need to practice just pulling out a little notepad uh, on your computer, on your paper, on your desk, and writing the stuff down based on the correlated pairs. Again, you can get the correlation chart uh, from Oanda. Just type in Oanda Currency Correlation on Google. You will find it. And uh, also make sure you are a member at urbanforex.ning.com to stay on top of uh, the time when the next webinar will be. So uh, you guys can join in on this. Um, so yes, that's it for today. Uh, Sonia, as far as your platform concerns, um, you can probably also download FX Pro's pl platform or any other platform such as FXCM. Uh, they all have MetaTraders for free. Um, I believe... Uh, 10,000 hours of practice. Eh, there's, good, there's a lot of practice that's needed for this. Um, but uh, it's just uh, this from the, for this whole week uh, until we come back for the next uh, webinar. Again, I'm going to ask a little bit more questions. I'm going to be more interactive on the next week's webinar. Um, so hopefully this is going to be a good learning curve for many of you guys. Uh, yes, John, this will be on YouTube. It will, as soon as it's launched on YouTube, it will also be on Ning. Uh, please, obviously, do not forget to rate the video um, if you like it. If you don't like it, you know, you're welcome to put comments below as well. Um, uh, <laughs> okay. uh, Scott, going to be shelling out for the trade room. I think it's worth it. Uh, yeah, you're welcome to join the trade room as well. Uh, for those of you... If who can afford it, you're welcome to join. Those of you who cannot afford it, obviously stay on Urban Forex. Uh, everything is free on this end and uh, we'll do whatever we can to help um, at, here at Urban Forex. So thanks for attending. Uh, it was nice meeting all of you guys. Thanks for uh, seeing a lot of new faces tonight. And uh, Dwight, uh, Naveen, if you could choose only one strategy to trade from, which one would it be? It would be this one, the one that I'm teaching you guys. And in fact, if any any of you guys come up with a cool, catchy name for this strategy, I will publish it. I will give it a new name. Right now, it's just called Pro Trading Strategy. We will give it a new name if any anybody comes up with anything. Uh, you're welcome, uh, Vladimir. I hope I'm saying it right. Uh, Dwight, cool. Thanks again, Naveen. You're welcome, Perry. Art Vision. Okay, so I will see you all on next week's uh, webinar. There might be one more on Monday. It will be the Urban Tower Scalping Strategies that I'll be sharing. Uh, we have a lot of information on that, so we will uh, meet for that. Yes, uh, Eddie, the three tower pivot strategy. I will go over that too. Um, Sonia, actually, Art Vision. Okay, okay. That sounds like a cool name. 
Uh, great sharing. Thank you, Naveen. John Barry, have a nice evening. You're welcome, John. Welcome, Sham. Uh, take care, Anton. Cheers. So I am out for now. I am out of coffee also. It is time for me to leave. So I will see you all um, on Monday and also next week. Thanks for attending. Take care. Bye-bye.